So when we're talking about example six here, this one is talking about surface area as well, uh, but this one is a, it's more like a, it's called a composite figure. It's like two figures stuck together, right? And so you can kind of maybe see that this would be two rectangular prisms maybe stuck together, right? You don't have to draw this, but I just want to show you that it's something like this, right? Okay. Um, so this is this is sort of what this might look like. Okay. There's that one. There's the kind of the first, the tall one, and then there's the shorter one that's on the side, right? So those are kind of stuck together. Okay. So what we have to realize is that there are we can't treat them like two separate ones because this right here is not exposed to the air, right? That's not exposed to the air. So we can't treat them like two separate, but we almost can. Yeah? Uh, what does exposed to the air mean? Well, it's, we're not counting this in the surface area. It's not on the surface. It's inside. Oh. Right? If you have two things that are stuck together, what's being covered up is not exposed, so that's not counted in the surface area. All right? So what we need to do then, let me just scratch this off, you know. What we need to do is to take a look at the sides that we do have. Now we can break up the outsides if we want, if that makes it easier for us. So for example, um, I could go, let's, let's kind of continue that. Can I find this area right here on this front half of this? Well, you can think about that as two rectangles, a tall rectangle and a rectangle that goes sideways, right? So we can think of it like that. So area one. Let's take a look at area one, which is kind of a collection of these two things, right? Actually, let's do let's do area one and area two. Let's split it up that way, okay? So we have <clears throat> 56, and we have, what's this, what's this length, uh, the width down here? How can we figure that out? Can you divide it by two? Um, divide this by two, the 56? No, uh, well, the 78, okay. So it's, it's split into two parts, but you can't assume that this is exactly half. Okay, how'd you get 33? Right. So we have 78 in width, and we have 45. See that? So this is 33. Okay. That's great. Now what about area 2? So this is area 1, and we'll calculate that in a second. What about area 2? How do I figure out those dimensions? Well, this is going to be 45, I guess. What's the height here? 25. How do you know it's 25? I did 55 minus 30. Okay, so you did 55 minus 30. That will give us this one. Right? That will give us this one. Now, do we want that one? No. No, I kind of want this one, which I already actually have, right? So that one's 30. Does that make sense? Okay. All right, so that's the front side. That's area one, that's area two. Now, does it make sense that there's identical ones on the back side? Okay, remember that the back side kind of looks like this. So there's another back side piece that looks exactly the same as the front side piece. Okay, so I'm going to go two times area one and two times area two. That's going to give us the front and the back. Are you with me so far? Okay, so now I've got the front and the back taken care of. I need to get this side, this side, this side, this side. I need the bottom side as well, and I need this other um, left side. The left side, the right side, the, the top pieces and the bottom piece. Right? So again, we can figure that out. Let's make this area 3. So area 3 is going to be that's easy, 27 times 30, isn't it? Right? Let's make this area 4 on the other side. So area 4, can we figure out what dimensions these are? That's 56 by what? Can anyone figure out what this bottom edge is? Yeah, 27, right? Same as this one. So 
that's 56 times 27. You don't have to draw out the net for each one of these if you don't have to. That's fine. I would mark up your diagram a little bit, though, so you know what you've found. So then what we have left, I'll do this in black, is these ones, right? The top, this side, and this side, and then the bottom. Well, let me show you a shortcut here. Okay? Look at the bottom, and notice that there is this plus this would be the exact same as the bottom. So you could times that by 2. So let's do area 5. Let's find the bottom. And let's multiply that by 2 to get all of these black ones. So what is the area of the bottom? It's going to be 78 times 27. Awesome. Okay. Now we're getting somewhere. You see how you just kind of piece it together? You can do a net. This is going to be a little bit of a complicated net, so I would just kind of go piece at a time and somehow just mark it off that you've covered it. Okay? And then finally we have, let's do this in a different color. This is area 6, right? So area 6 is going to be, what's that one going to be? Well, we had this as 25, right? 55 minus 30 is 25 times, and what's this length right here? That's the same as that one, the same as that one, 27. Okay? Okay, so what I want you guys to do is I want you guys to figure this out in your calculator. Okay? And then we have to multiply some of these by 2, don't we? This one times 2 here. Okay? So you figure out this and this and this and this, and this, and this, and add them all up. Okay? Okay, so let me get you started off with uh, question number nine and build your skills. So again, we have a composite figure here. We, just, we need to add up all of these sides that are exposed to the air. If this was an actual physical object, everything that is exposed to the air, the outside, that's the surface area. So this one is going to be pretty easy. These sides, this one and then the back two, right, are going to be pretty easy. This one's going to be easy. This one's going to be easy. The bottom, the left side, and the back side are going to be pretty easy. The one that's going to be hard is going to be the top part. Why? Because we have what would be a full um, uh, square on the top, but then we have this little part that's covered. You see that? And so if you have, um, so let's say, um, okay, so we have this right here, this is the bottom, okay, and this is the cylinder on top, Now that's actually a prism, but it's kind of like this, right? So do you see how the bottom of this, this part right here would be covering part of the top of the base? Mm -hmm. So we have to take that into account. We have to make sure we don't count that in, in part of our surface area. Yeah? Yeah, you could find the surface area of this bottom. That's not going to be too hard. That's going to be 1.5 times 1.5, yeah. right? So let's make that area 1. So 1.5 times 1.5. That's going to be 2.25. That's going to be meters squared. Let's do this one right here as area 2. So that's this little top section. Area 2, this little top part, is going to be 0 0.5 times 0 0.5. Right? Okay, so what's 0 0.5 times 0 0.5? That's 0.25. Very good. You're squared. So now what we can do is we can figure out this one. Let's make this area 3. Let's use a different color. Let's make this, that I'm coloring it in gray here, let's make that area 3. Wouldn't we have to subtract uh, 0.25 times 2? No, no. Well, here's the thing. Y you don't have to initially count the bottom of this because it's covered. Okay. So we're not even going to count it. Yeah. Okay. But what we have to do is we have to find out this gray shaded part. And that's going to be that 1.5 times 1.5 minus the 0.25. 
So area 3 right here is going to be 2.25 meters squared minus this. So that's going to be 2 meters squared. Everyone see that? So we've got this one so far, we've got this one so far, we've got this one so far. So now your job is to get all four of the sides of this um, square prism here, and then all four of the sides of this uh, square prism down here. Okay. So you guys go ahead and work on that. And so uh, then add them all up, and then we'll get our total surface area. All right? Go ahead. All right, so back to number nine. This is the uh, answer to the question here. Add up all the surfaces, and you got surface area. The next part of the lesson uh, talks about uh, this example seven. So turn to page 143 if you're not there already. We need to add another layer here to surface area. So it's one thing to um, know about surface area, another thing to use the net diagrams to add up all the area of some kind of you know, strange figure. Uh, this is where this is applied. This is where you'll need to uh, do this kind of math. And this example says this, Cream has been hired to paint the walls and ceilings of a living room in a house. The room is, and it, give, it gives the dimensions of the room, 22 and a half feet long, 13 and a half feet wide, eight and a half feet high. There's a small window and there are two windows, um, two more windows, and two doors. Okay, and so what we need to do, and you can see the picture there, right? Uh, on the side of the page, this guy is painting, and he's obviously not going to paint the doors or the windows. <clears throat> so the question A says, what surface must he paint? So again, this is a real life example of where we need to know how to do this math in order to calculate the, the painted surface. And what you first of all want to realize is that we have uh, four walls, <coughs> excuse me, and a ceiling, and we have to subtract the area of the doors and the windows, right? Okay. So um, th the solution is here: um, the walls and so on. There's two walls, ceilings, and um, you find the areas uh, of each of those, and then they start to focus on the uh, so here's the total wall and, and ceiling space. And then they focus on the, w the window, and then the other two windows, the smaller ones, and also the two doors. And when you find the areas of each of these, right, you have to subtract that from your total. Okay? So here's the total area to paint would be all of the walls and ceiling minus the doors and windows and stuff like that. Okay? So that's, that's sort of the pattern. Uh, that's the example. Now, it would be probably a good idea to draw a net, right, of the walls, you know, and so on, and the ceiling attached to one of the walls and whatever, and then draw your two windows, draw a window here, draw your two doors, and so on. <clears throat> and you can get a visual of what you have to paint and what you have to subtract, right? So you subtract all those and so on. Okay, so I think this matches up with this question here, but that's that's an idea. So the net diagram will come in handy here as well. All right, so you got to keep track of everything. So once you get that, um, that's your your total. Um, the next question, <clears throat> again, that's that's one thing, but the next question is another level of difficulty. Okay, and what does this say? We want to use this information from A. And it says this, one gallon of paint covers approximately 255 square feet. How many gallons will he have to buy? So in real life example, it's not just, not just enough to have a surface area, but you need to actually use that to solve the problems that are associated. So that is, how much, how much paint do you buy? Right? So if you have the painted surface, if you have the surface to be painted, and it looks like uh, right here, I guess, 795 square feet, so for B, you take the total square footage. Let's make this a little bit bigger so you can see that. You take the total square footage, which is 795, and you divide it by uh, the square feet per can. And that will give you how many cans or how many gallons. Okay. 
And so if he needs 3.1 gallons exactly, um, you can buy four gallons of paint if that's what they're coming in. Okay, so you round up. Make sense? Okay, and finally, C says this, and here's another level up even. This is another, another level more complicated. So C says, if paint costs this much per gallon, and he wants to make a profit of 225 bucks, how much should he charge to paint the room? So he wants to make a profit of 225, and this is the cost per gallon, okay? So he knows how many gallons he has to use, or how many gallons he has to buy, and then he wants to make sure that the profit is this much over the cost of the paint. Okay, so let's go to uh, C here, and let's just kind of look at the solution here. So the number of gallons that he has to buy, that's four, times the cost is 221. Okay, so this is the cost of the paint. He wants to make a profit for all of his time and effort and expertise. For this room, he wants to make 225 bucks on this job. And so he takes the cost and adds in his profit, and this is what the job should cost. Okay, now he'd round that up maybe to the nearest kind of nice round number, and he'd say, hey, 450 bucks is what he would uh, charge for that job. Okay, so <clears throat> that's that third that number letter C there is uh, you know that's that's applicable to what you guys might be doing someday, right? If, whether it's going to be painting, I know you have painting family there, uh, rentals and stuff like that. So this is the kind of stuff that you'd want to do. The guy that does the estimates, or the girl that does the estimates, is going to have to do stuff like this. Take the measurements, you know, and find out the area. You know, maybe the doors and windows are a little bit of buffer space. Maybe when you're on the job, you don't subtract exactly the doors and windows. Maybe you just leave those in there and that's your extra 5 or 10% of, you know, just in case the, the, the paint, you know, you, you end up going a little heavy on the paint or whatever. And so you have a little bit of buffer. And then you factor in, okay, this should take me about, you know, um, should take me about 10 hours. Um, I want to, planning to make 20 bucks an hour or 22 and a half bucks an hour. That's my rate, so it's going to take me about 10 hours. So that's 225 bucks that I need to make from that. And so you just add all that in and you hand in the, uh, the job estimate, right? And that's what the person that's doing the estimate, that's what they do. Calculate the costs, the time. Um, figure in the profit and all this sort of stuff. That's exactly what, what you would do. All right. Okay, so um, I think uh, I'm going to let you work on number 11 as well. So we have a little bit of class time here. There's 11 and there's 12. Okay, now write this down. 11 and 12. You have to have those done for tomorrow. Okay, so we don't forget. Okay, 11 and 12. You should get uh, probably close to 11 done here in the rest of the class time you have. Okay?